Okay guys, I have a confession to make. I have never seen The Lord of the Rings, any of the movies, except for like little scenes of it on TV when I was younger, but I've never sat down and watched any of the Lord of the Rings movies. And I have never read The Lord of the Rings books. However, I did read The Hobbit when I was younger, and I did watch all three of The Hobbit movies. But you know, to be honest, they didn't deserve the hate. I know everybody hates those movies, and for good reason, but... I thought they were pretty good. I didn't love them. I didn't hate them. They're about a C. I give them a C. So, I came in the Fellowship of the Ring. I never really planned on seeing this movie, but I hope that it was coming back to my local cinema for the 20th anniversary. And it had it in IMAX for the first time. Because apparently this movie came out before IMAX was a thing. So, I was excited. Me and my dad watched it at the local theater, and they're actually showing all three movies this month for Lord of the Rings. So, I guess if I was ever going to watch these movies, now would be the perfect time. So, um, I think this was better than the Hobbit movies by fall. No offense to the Hobbit movies. They were pretty good. But, I felt like the characters didn't have that good chemistry compared to this. And I like this movie better because it didn't over-rely on the CGI. You know, it used a lot of practical effects, and it showed emphasis on natural landscapes. And I gotta say, New Zealand looks beautiful. And watching this movie makes me want to visit New Zealand. If that inspires other people to go to New Zealand, then these movies must have helped the, tour the tourism industry a lot. So, I guess it, these movies helped New Zealand's economy, which is pretty cool. Probably not lately, you know, because of the unspecified virus of unknown origin, but, you know, n normal times. Now, getting to the movie itself, it opens with this long prologue, which explains what the ring is, who Sawan was, how the ring was lost and found. Basically, you know, need to know basis. It's a very well done prologue, which explains the basics without being too confusing. It was simple and to the point. I I, li I like this prologue a lot. Um, I'm glad they just didn't do like text on a screen and they actually showed us what was happening. That's one of the re that's one of the things about Star Wars I was never a big fan of just text on a screen to explain things. I never read them anyway. So basically there was Sauron and he made these rings and he's like, here guys, take these rings to make you powerful. But then he was like, psych. And he has this one ring, which controls all the other rings, and by the way, I can't say the word ring, so you're just going to have to deal with that. So, the elves, and the dwarves, and the men, they end together to fight Sauron, who has the one ring. And one of these men, whose name is Isildur, and I'm pretty sure Maze Williams' character from Doctor Who is named Isildur, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, Isildur cuts off Sauron's finger. And he destroys Sawan's body, and he took the ring. But I'm wondering, like, maybe Sawan sort of secured the ring battle instead of just having it blatantly on his finger. Maybe he could have, I don't know, maybe he could have had it under his glove. Um, I just feel like there was a way around that, you know? I feel like it was too easy, but anyway. Seattle takes the ring for himself, but he's killed by these orcs, and the ring is lost in the river. So it stays in the river for like a thousand years, and it's found by Gollum, who becomes crazy. He's like a crazy demon monkey, kind of like Yoda, but instead of Yoda taking ketamine, he takes crack. It's like crack Yoda, basically. And we see a flashback to The Hobbit, or the events of The Hobbit, where Bilbo takes the ring from Gollum, and... Unfortunately, it wasn't Martin Freeman, because these movies were made way before The Hobbit was, and Peter Jackson didn't know Martin Freeman was going to be Bilbo. He probably didn't even know Martin Freeman existed, because that was before The Office. But, you know, I I'd like if they had, like, a remastered edition, where they have Martin Freeman play Bilbo, just for that one little scene. That would have been interesting, but anyway, we're just going to have to accept that it's Ian Holmes in a rig. So he flash forward, like, 60 years later... And Bilbo still has the ring, and it's kind of kept him young, but he's a little crazy now. And he's celebrating his 111th birthday, because the ring has let him live that long. 
and he invites Gandalf, who comes to town to party with this magical firework. It's very cool. Comic Relief sets off this firework. It's all, it's a big episode. It's interesting. Well, the climax of that scene is Bilbo makes a speech, and he announces that he's gonna go away, and he puts the ring on, and he disappears. And Gandalf realizes that he still has the ring. And he convinces Bilbo to give it to him, and Bilbo is kind of hesitant, but then he does. Then he just kind of fucks off to Elfland, and we don't really see him for a couple more hours. And Gandalf finds out that Gollum was captured and tortured by the elves until he told him where the ring is and who has the ring. So now the plot's gonna start. And Gandalf gives Frodo and his friend Sam, aka Bob from Stranger Things, the ring, and tells them to go to Motal to destroy it. Meanwhile, Gandalf has to meet up with his old wizard body, wizard buddy, Solomon, aka Count Dooku. But Count Dooku's evil now, and he works for Sauron, and he sends his minions to find Frodo, and he takes Gandalf as a prisoner. Also, they have this, like, fight, which is kind of cool, but it looks a bit dated, and it becomes funny when you remember that both of these guys are in, like, the 70s by this point. So it just seems like two old men fighting in a nursing home, like, like when Mummy Man and Bonacle Boy were fighting. It was kind of like that. So Frodo and Sam are traveling through the forest, and they pick up their comic relief characters, Merry and Pippin, who for the rest of these videos I'm just going to call comic relief characters. And fun fact, Merry was played by Charlie from Lost, which was a good show, I gotta admit. I recognized him right away, he was one of my favorite characters on Lost. So Frodo, Sam, and comic relief are like being chased by these horsemen sent by Count Dooku, and they run to an end. And earlier in the movie, Gandalf said that he'd meet them at the inn, but he's not there because he's being held prisoner in this big towel. And they meet Aragorn, aka Tony Lip from Green Book, great movie by the way. He's the exiled king, and he's trying to get his throne back. And are soon chased away from the inn by these horsemen, but Frodo is stabbed by one of them. But just in the nick of time, we get a deus ex machina in the form of Liv Tyler, who plays Alvin. She's an elf, and she stops the horsemen, and she leaves, leads all the hobbits to Elfland to heal. And when they get to Elfland, Bilbo sees Gandalf and Bilbo again. Frodo sees Gandalf and Bilbo again, and Bilbo's aged like 20 years because he doesn't have the ring anymore. And he wants the ring back, and he goes crazy a bit, he kind of has a little golem face before he snaps out of it. And he cries. And we find out that Aragorn and Alvin are in love. Now, this wasn't really talked about much in the movie, but I'm assuming this will be expanded on in the sequel. So we meet Alvin's father, Elrond, aka Smith from The Matrix, aka Red Skull from The Avengers. And surprise, he's, he's not playing a bad guy this time. What an what a, what a interesting character now. Um, he still kind of looks like a bad guy, but I think that's just the way the actor looks. He just kind of has, like, a bad guy face. So, he gathers this council, and they decide that nine people will join together to go to Motal and destroy the ring. And they call themselves the Fellowship of the Ring. Q1 Howard voice, hey, that's the name of the show. So this fellowship consists of Frodo, Sam, Gandalf, comic relief guys, Aragorn, a dwarf named Gimli, who reminds me of the dad from Brave. A sexy elf named Legolas, who's played by Orlando Bloom. And Boromir, a.k.a. Ned Stark, a.k.a. Sean Bean. And before they leave, Bilbo gives Frodo his sword that turns blue from the orcs around. Isn't, isn't that convenient for the plot? So they leave Elfland and travel through these snowy mountains, which reminds me of my call in my front lawn, cause... We live in the Midwest. But while they're walking, Count Dooku makes a storm, so it forces them to travel through these abandoned mines. So they're soon attacked by these orcs in the caves, and they have an epic fight scene. And by the way, these orcs remind me of the Orgons from Doctor Who, like the 1970s Doctor Who. They look like Orgons. Anyway, 
they have an epic fight scene, and they have to run through this very unstable staircase. And Gandalf defends the Fellowship from this big troll, but he falls off the staircase in the process, and he has a fake-out death. And I know it's a fake-out death, because he's in the postal for the next movie. He, like, it's not like they're even trying to hide this. I, I kind of wish they didn't do that, but let's move on. So they escape, and they head down the river, and rest on these mountains. And Ned Stark is kind of tempted by the ring. He kind of gets a little corrupted by it, but not all the way. And he tries to get the ring from Frodo. And they have this little scuffle. But they're distracted by the horsemen. And they're back again. And there's another epic battle. And the comic relief duo is taken captive. And Ned Stark is killed by the commander of the horsemen. And he dies in Aragorn's arms. And I gotta say, the acting between Sean Bean and Viggo Mortensen was so well done that this scene was probably my favorite in the movie and you know like why does my man Ned Stark have to die in every single thing you know like he can go one fantasy franchise he can't make it through one without getting through the first movie or the full season I don't know Son Bean deserves battle so after seeing what happened with Son Bean Frodo's afraid that the ring might corrupt his friends and he decides to go to Mordor alone but Sam isn't going to let this happen, and he chases after the boat, and he kind of swims after the boat, but he almost drowns, but he's saved by Frodo. And I, I gotta say, Son Aston's acting it was terrific in this scene, as with his chemistry with Elijah Wood. Like, I, I feel like in Hollywood, Son Aston's kind of underlooked. Like, he's in a lot of stuff, but nobody really gives him any credit. But he was great in this, so... And the rest of the cast kind of goes to rescue Comic Relief. And that's the end of the movie. And the end song was very nice. So all in all, it was a great movie. Good action scenes, great scenery, good plot and suspense, fantastic music. But what makes this movie outstanding was the characters. Their motivations, their down to earthness, and the genuine chemistry between the actors. Everyone was perfectly cast, and you could tell. And I cannot wait for the sequel, where Gandalf totally doesn't come back to life. So I'm going to give this a B B+. Let me know down in the comments what you thought. Please don't spoil those other two, because I didn't see them yet, but I'll, I'll get going, because they're all playing at my local cinema this month. Um, so thanks everybody for watching. I hope everybody out there has a nice day, and stay safe, and peace.